score. So what we want to do today is really cover uh, multi-level laser systems. And we're jumping ahead to Chapter 9 here, and we're going to go back to Chapter 8 once we get this uh, idea through. But lasers can have two, three, four, or more energy levels. In fact, some complicated lasers have many energy levels, and the accounting of that is very, very difficult. Um, what we see here is a three-level laser system. And in this particular laser system, we have a pump, and we pump from level zero up to level two. Uh, we have three possible transitions in this laser. Um, one of the transitions goes from level two down to level one. And in this diagram, that's our laser transition. That's where the laser is going to operate at. The electrons also fall from level one to level zero, and they also can fall from level two to level zero. So we have three possible transitions here. And of course, to make our laser work well, we want to maximize uh, that transition right there. Of course, with the three-level system, this isn't the only type of, of laser we can make. Another possible way to make a laser would be to pump up to level two um, and then have level one be the, uh, or level one to zero be the transition. Um, notice equally, we can just ignore level two and we could pump from level zero to level one as well. And in this case, even though we have three levels, we're not using them, and this is a, a two-level laser system. Um, generally, type A laser works much better than type B laser, and, and A and B are, are arbitrary labels I just made up off the top of my head right now. And the reason for this is the population in state zero, N of zero, is much, much greater than in two or in one, uh, and it's very, very hard to get a population inversion. Remember, the laser only works if you have more population in the upper part of your laser of your energy level than in the lower energy level. And it's very hard to get a population inversion to the ground state just because of the sheer number of atoms you have here. And you have to provide an immense amount of energy to empty out that ground state. So this type of laser over here generally works much better, and this type of laser, in fact, can be very, very hard to get going, except in rather special circumstances. So here's an example of a three-level laser system. Excuse me, a three-level laser system. We can, of course, also have four-level laser systems that are more complicated, and it would look like this. Um, here you can see as we go and add another level, and this should, in fact, be pumped from zero to three, not zero to two. Um, we have a... a a lot more accounting to do, and if we were to go to five or six level laser systems, it would, be that, it would get that much more difficult. Um, but let's look at some of the possible four level lasers we can have. One of them is right there. We can have a laser transition from three to two. Alternatively, we could go from two to one or one to zero, but again, since we're going to the ground state here, this could be a very, very difficult laser to actually physically implement. Um, and each of those is essentially possible uh, four level systems from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, or 1 to 0. Um, we can also make a 3-level laser out of a 4-level system. For example, if we have the laser transition be from 3 to 1, as shown right there, um, essentially we're ignoring level 2 as far as the laser operation goes, but we do have to account, of course, for the fact that some of our electrons will go down to level 2 and depopulate level 3. Also, some will go down and populate level one, and these have to be taken into account in all the gain accounting that's done and writing our differential equations. So, so we're really thinking about a three-level laser system here. We have to do the accounting for a four-level system. Uh, similarly, we could do this type of two-level system um, and do the accounting as well. Now, to finish up this little mini-lecture, there are two terms that are used in the book that you need to be a little bit familiar with when you start to talk about multi-level laser systems. And I don't think the book does a very good job of explaining these. So let me try to go and give you more of an intuitive feeling for what these mean. The first of these is the branching ratio. And that's essentially where the electrons go. So, so let's take a look at the branching ratio in terms of our, our fairly simple three-level system right here. Essentially, the branching ratio is in the absence of photons, where the electrons end up. What's the probability of electrons going between two energy levels? Um, and it's essentially given by 
the rate energy levels go of the transition is in interest. So in this case, this would be phi 2, 1 we're looking at here. And so it would be 1 over tau 2, 1. And the, in the numerator and the denominator term is essentially the total rate out of state 2. So in this case, it would be uh, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, and this term would effectively go away. Um, let's go ahead and write 2, 1 there to keep track of that. And so essentially what you're looking at is the rate of depopulation out of state 2 to the level you want divided by the total rate out of all the other ways it can go down. Um, and what this says is, let's take a look at a couple of things here, is what this essentially says is that if tau 2, 1, and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this because this is a little bit confusing. So there's the branching ratio over 1 over tau 2, 1, 1 over tau 2, 0, plus 1 over tau 2, 1. So that's a little bit more convenient. Let's just go ahead and erase the generic formula here um, so you can see what it would look like in a 3 or 4 or more level system. Um, but what this branching ratio means is if tau 2, 1 is very, very small, uh, let me get another color pen here, tau 2, 1 is very, very small, this term in the numerator, since tau is in the denominator, is going to be very big, and this term is going to be very big. If tau 2, 0 is large, in other words, it takes a long time for electrons to do this transition right here, and thus the rate is very, very slow, um, we can effectively ignore this term, and this branching ratio is 1, or 100%. And essentially what that means is if it's very fast transition on the laser transition you want, and all the other transitions are very slow, the branching ratio, the number that go to the transition you want naturally, is very, very high. It's a unity. It's 100%. Um, on the other hand, let's go ahead and see if I can get rid of those without getting rid of the rest of it. Um, on the other hand, if tau 2, 1 is about the same as tau 2, 0, so tau 2, 1 is about tau 2, 0, um, then this term is basically going to be 1 over tau, this term is going to be 2 over tau, and your branching ratio is 50%, which makes sense, because essentially half of your electrons go into this transition that you want, the other half of your electrons do that transition. And you can see what will happen if tau 2, 1 is very long compared to tau 2, 0. Your branching ratio gets very small, and the electrons on the transition we're talking about uh, don't have a very high probability of doing that. And that's essentially what the branching ratio means. Another term that's defined in the book, again, it's not very well explained, although it's a little bit better explained than branching ratio, I think, is the quantum efficiency. And that corresponds to the energy wasted in a transition. And so let's take a look. Um, let me go ahead and grab a red pin here. Um, at, for example, the four-level laser system, where our laser transition is there. Um, the difference between the laser energy levels is E3 minus E2. The difference between the pump energy levels, in this case, is E3 minus E0. And you can see that this ratio is about 3 to 1. Um, so since this is about 1 third, if this has a value of 1, the quantum efficiency is 1 third. What does that mean? It means that if we put in one quanta of energy or one unit of energy enough to raise from this state an electron up from this state to this state, the light we get out is about a third of that energy, the best we can possibly do with this laser. If everything else is perfectly efficient, means that we're only going to get about a third of the energy out that we put in due to quantum concerns of raising an electron up, the fact that we're dealing with single electrons and unit values there. Um, if, on the other hand, we decided to build the laser on this transition right here, then our quantum efficiency is more like 20, 25% or something like that. Um, however, on the other hand, let's look at, at system B right over here, and let's say we wanted to do this particular thing, as is highlighted in red, where tau 1, 0 is the transition, then our quantum efficiency looks to be something on the order of 60, 70 percent, something like that, because the difference in energy of going up to the laser transition is a lot smaller. And so the quantum efficiency essentially says, 
this is the best efficiency I can ever get out of a laser, assuming everything else is perfect. And so we've learned two terms today, as well as looking at uh, multiple level laser systems. One, the branching ratio, which essentially tells you whether your electrons are going where you want them to. And the quantum efficiency, which says, look, you can never be 100% efficient with a laser. You're always going to waste some energy. And the difference in the energy levels tells you the best efficiency you could possibly achieve.